Painting with Menoth John is presented in Super Legitivision. Super Legitivision, the future of podcasting. It's dot com. Hello, I'm Menoth John. And I'd like to welcome you. First of all, let me take just a moment to thank you for allowing me back into your homes. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your miniatures and paint along with us each week. Let's go over to the canvas here and let's get started. I believe, I believe, every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. I believe, I believe. Every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. Let's build a happy little cloud. Let's build some happy little trees. There are no limits here. We start out by believing here. You can almost paint with anything. Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, all you've got to do is practice. And I'm going to tell you, we're practiced for tonight. Holy cripes, we're coming at you. We're going to use our stereos. We're going to use Dolby 84.6. Um, so we've got all the bass, and we've got all the trebles, and, and several woofers. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We are back and better than ever. And I have to tell you that there are a few things better than the Sunday Night Extravaganza. And as usual, joining me... In the cat box seat up here, you know him as the mighty right hand of the podcast. You may also know him as at, me, at <laughs> John O. Spencer, Jesus Palomino. That is the co-host with the most, Mr. John Spencer. hey Hot damn. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Suck it, the guy that used to be with Johnny Carson. So anyway, <laughs> I'm having a trouble with names tonight, John. Ed McMahon, <laughs> Fucking A. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we just got our, our explicit tag at T minus T plus 45 seconds and counting. Welcome, everybody, from the D6 generation who's tuning us in for the first time. <laughs> Hope your kids weren't yeah, listening to that one. So anyway, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very exciting show lined up for us, uh, and we're going to get into that here in just a second. But before we do that, we are want to know what we're having to drink tonight because I haven't had enough to drink and I'm going to have some more. So um, I am Menoth John, and, of course, I am going to be drinking tonight a little shot of the Kraken out of a the K glass from the Kraken Shot Glass Collection. John, what will you be having? Uh, well, I'm going to start off with a shot of uh, Captain Morgan's Cannon Blast out of a Paint Without John shot glass. Very nice. And then I have more beers to uh, follow that up afterwards. Well, on behalf of all those beers that are going to follow it up afterwards, and everyone that has joined us live in the Painting with Menoth John chat chat room, hey, Ron. Ron. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Liquid lubrication. It is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. We are happy to be here tonight. You know, we do this We do this once a week, John. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it's important that you be aware of that because if you're going to be the mighty right hand of the show, that means you have to understand the schedule and how often this show happens, which is every Sunday night at this time. You know, we pre-ramble for a half an hour in order that we not suck as much when 7 o'clock comes up. And uh, we pre-ramble today and everything went fine. Yep. It was really good, aside from an internet hiccup, but uh, we solved that. Absolutely. You know, John... If you are interested in what just took place not more than four minutes ago, you could join down here, patreon.com slash menothjohn, and for the low, low price of a single dollar per episode, John, did you realize that's only $4 a month? Uh, I did. I'm good with math. That is right. That is four times one, which equals four. And uh, that is uh, my public school education coming out to uh, pay dividends, folks. Uh, four, it's a magic number. Fuck you, three. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll give you that for a buck, but if you want the real value, it's not the best value, but it's better value. Um, we're making the internet great again at the $2 level, and that means that you're going to pick up the co-host corner. John, tell us a little bit about the co-host corner. Oh, well, you know, it's my bi-weekly, semi-weekly, who knows how long I can, how often I'll do them, uh, podcast where I talk about movies and, uh, dojo 
and work on some other segments. But right now, uh, next one has going to have me reviewing a Korean movie called War of the Arrows. Very nice. And then uh, teaching Kev Bryant why he should play with Idrians in his mercenary list, for Christ's sakes. That's right, folks. If you want all the skullduggery on the Idrians, that's the $2 level over there at patreon.com slash menothjohn. If you want to kick it to the next level and get to be part of our exclusive crony inner circle at the $5 level, not only will you get the sticker that you will get at the $2 level, you'll also get one of these crony inner circle bottle openers to open your favorite beer or other alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverages. They work on both, John. And they do. They do. And as long as it's got one of those kind that you can go like this with, you're all set. And uh, you and you will get our exclusive uh, hangout that we're going to be doing Maybe next week, John. What do you think? Next week uh, sounds good. Just let me know in advance so I can make sure the work knows. Yep, i got to figure that out on the Googles. I think I'll have time this week to get after that. So we're going to look at that first $5 patron level Google Hangout uh, this week. And we will do all kinds of fun stuff. Also, coming to a theater near you um, at the $10 level is you would be able to write stuff for the, or at least tell the spokes model, what it is you want to have said on your behalf at, during the, uh, the the spokes model portion? Now, John, we don't have a spokes model tonight. Nope, nope. Our our ten dollar patron is uh, was content with the first one, which is good because it was epic, and you should all go check it out. So yep, it's heard it. all about design space, folks. If you like design space, you're gonna love that one. Now, I'm not talking about the last one. It'd be two episodes ago, right, John? Correct. Two episodes ago. Ah, there you go. Um, if Bowie, if you give at the ten dollar level for uh for a month um you damn skippy i'll do a tap dance anyway <laughs> um i'm oh total horror On video think about that uh, exactly could be had um you know john i don't have much of a, a political career ahead of me but that would make it even less i don't think tap dancing would make it any less than the rest of this podcast and our Somewhat salty language. There is that. You know, some of those people don't like this language we use. But you know, you know what, folks? We we always use it in a complete sentence, which is important because we are Fucking always right. educational. That's right. We use all of our uh, followness for the benefit of those who are around us. So you know, the people who are currently running for election here in the United States right now, um, they're foul on the inside. We're foul on the outside. So we're bringing you that. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've got oh. all kinds of great stuff like that. You know, we, John, we also have sponsors. Were you aware of that? I was aware of that. That's we have several right. sponsors. <laughs> That's right. You know, folks, you know, one of the thing ways we're going to make the Internet great is if we all use the metric system, John. <laughs> yes, that'll make America great again. Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure we can make America great anymore. We tried and... You know, but that's other people's business. We're going to try to make the Internet great again, and we're going to bring it to you in metric. I'm, we're, you know that bits and bytes are part of what computers use, John? I'm aware of this, yes. So if you call, if you get a hold of Adam at Greenleaf Terrain and you ask him for a gigabit of terrain, he will give you that in metric gigabits. You know, he's not going to use, um, you know, DRAMs or anything like that. He's going to give you the metrics. And he'll per, he'll get you a, a a linear obstacle out of sixty four gigabits, and um, he might even try to use a, a a centiliter in in part of it across the top, you know, as it, it, it to give it some some spikiness, and that would be a great way to have a, a you know like a linear obstacle because it would be very showy in three D. So. <laughs> I'm not sure where that was going, John. But, but a little it, off the rails, yeah. but that's that's par for the course. Adam at Greenleaf Terrain, he'll hook your shit up with all the metrics. Um, then we have Flight Medic Painting. You know, John, in all seriousness, folks, if you need your stuff painted, um, you know, Flight Medic Painting, he's going to give you the, the best deals on the best paint jobs. He really is. Right now, uh, Flight Medic is um, he's, he's a little laid up. He had some surgeries. And surgery is not cheap because we are not in Canada. And... Uh, so he is uh he's looking for a little bit of uh he's out of work right now with that injury. And since uh you know we're not Canada, he's got himself some hardships that he's going on. He's got a great family. Um and so if you need your stuff painted, I highly recommend Flight Medic Painting. Uh John, you have put that that uh up in the past. Actually Flight Medic has put that link up in the past. Oh, but right on top of it, as usual, the co host with the most. I don't know how I would do this show without you, John. But Flight Medic Painting, he'll paint, he paints reds amazing, greens amazing. He'll paint a purple, 
that'll knock your damn socks off. But he'll paint whatever color you need it to be um, in case that it's none of those three are what you need. So give him a shout. He will paint stuff up for you in America and send it to you in America or other places if you ask him. So there you go. Uh, you know, KR Multicase, um, Sherwin has moved on from the K KR Multicase in case you were not aware, Mr. John Spencer. I was not aware. Yes, he has moved on. He is now full-time with the Steamforged. Um, oh, so good. while they are technically still our sponsor, we're not sure who our sponsorship is actually being wrangled by anymore. Um, well, we're not sure they're aware that we're a spons that they're sponsoring us, to be honest. Um, so KR Multicase, it's still great, even if they don't right. know who we are. So that's a slogan. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Clockwork oh, Phoenix, Clockwork Phoenix. John, were you aware that Clockwork Phoenix has a a card game that they are uh, that they're working on for the Guild Balls? Yeah, I heard that they're working on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yep. In fact, they were uh, DC was at the Gen Con. That's a convention, by the way, and little one. Uh, little one. Um, they play games there. Clockwork Phoenix. Um, he's got that. Uh, I believe it's called Shadow Games. Is the name of the uh, name of the card game, and uh, it looks terrific. And DC's at the helm, so you know it's going to be great. A lot of innovative mechanics going on there. Yes, I did steal that from the D6G. And uh, so I, I would recommend if you look at um, if you use the internet. Um, which is important because you're probably using it now. Um, the you, you could use Google, which is one of them search engines. I think they're going to get popular, John. Um, and the invest in those now. Yeah, yeah, I'd get in on that Google. They're going places. Those guys. They have uh, innovative mechanics. Those guys. Anyway, and if you search for the Shadow Games, there uh, the the folks over there at uh, the Wargamer Consortium did a a, a video with DC. At the uh, at the Gen Cons, showing that game being played, super legit, totally sweet, highly recommend it. Uh, get on over there, and uh, we'll have DC on here again real soon, just to talk a little bit about all that stuff. So, um, oh, he's now booked through December. Well, yeah, pay so no attention for Adepticon of next year. Pay, you start talking to him now. <laughs> pay, pay, pay no attention to flight medic painting, although he's a super sweet guy and totally mer totally amazing. So there you go. Um, Clock, so Clockwork Phoenix, it's got more DC than Privateer these days. There you go. That's a slogan. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's oh. our. That's what we call the business, John. We're only we're two minutes ahead of schedule, though. It it happens sometimes. It, we're having a good night. We're rolling. We are rolling. So you know, John, we have a little thing we like to call poll of the show. Yes, we do, and sometimes we put it in the beginning sometimes of the show. Sometimes we put it where we said we were going to put it, and then sometimes we don't. But let's put it up now. Oh, there it is. So we asked the Internet, and we asked it nicely because we don't want to piss the Internet off because we've heard that's bad. Um, and we asked it nicely on the Twitters. D John, were you aware that we're both on the Twitter? <laughs> I was aware that we are both on the Twitter since I follow you. <laughs> that's right. I follow you. I should follow you anywhere. That's just the kind of guy I am. That's totally not a stalker. Um, the, 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 the poll of the show was, um, we asked, what model should I paint on the show? This is groundbreaking information. that we have. My poll of the show questions are getting worse every week, John. And, and uh, this one only got 45 votes because can you blame them? I wouldn't well, have, you know. I wouldn't have voted on this one. Just to send me uh, a message. I did vote on this one. More on that later. Okay, so... Um, the your choices were Durant two, we had Elara two, we had the List Healer, uh, and then we had High Shields, which re el elicited thirteen percent of the people going, "What's a high? What's a high shield?" And ah, oh, Jesus, I know, I dri driving a stake through your heart. And uh, I own two units of those guys. They're not bad, and that's that, what I voted for. That, well, that there's nothing wrong with that. So I have one unit of them, and they're not all completely painted, but someday they will be. Um, but uh, Durant to the uh, the winner here. I was kind of rooting for Alara too, to be honest, because she that model is freaking beautiful. Holy cow! Uh, it is dynamic and it is amazing, and it has Doug Hamilton's fingerprints all over it. Um, boy, yeah. it, boy, it was a pain in the ass to put together. Holy crap! Uh, but it is together. Um, I got one of these egregious wastes of of packaging. Let me put it up here on the screen. So you, you get this. This box is huge. 
and it's mostly air, and uh, you get you get a model in it, and then you get a pin pin suite, and you get a card, and a ch- and like most of Oregon, Lots of air. most Look at of all the air you get, Holy most moly. of most of Oregon died for this box, and um, you know they gave it to us, so it's in there. It's limited edition, so at least there wasn't a lot of trees that died for it. I'll use it to ship stuff. Yeah, no doubt. Super sweet for shipping. Um, so anyway, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to... I think I'm going to turn on all the lights, John. All the lights. Here turn we go. Them all on. Let's turn off this god dang shoal pole. There you go. Boom. Here comes the lights. We're going to put that light on. We're going to turn this light on. It is now going Me to be... Too. So much like the core, we are going to be uh, getting hot in here. So I'm going to use my unobtainium to turn that heat into... Painting prowess here. So there, that's how it works here on the Painting with Manoth John show. Uh, I did watch the core again this week, John. Oh, God. I haven't even seen it once, so you've Man. watched it enough for both of us. That movie is fucking horrible. Jesus. <laughs> it's worse than I remembered. It really is. Um, <laughs> it's, God. Oh. It's, <laughs> did you see what Pygmalion said? That's not air. That's design space. Oh, snap, Pygmalion. This <laughs> one's for you. Hot. Hey, Ron. Mm. Design space. <laughs> That's right. All right. So, all right. So, folks, let's talk a little bit about what it is we're doing here. Because uh, I was on the D6G generation, and what's really awesome about the painting cam that I'm using right now, John, is that I can be like demonstrative with my hands in the big screen while everybody can see me up here above. So, that's super. This is all the television high production that we can have. Um,. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, this is Durant 1. This is the version of the model that came with the uh, – there There was a game, in case you missed it. It was called <laughs> War Machine Tactics. Um, Probably did. It kick-started about a billion and a half dollars, and what you got was a really bad ripoff of XCOM. And it's not good, and I don't recommend – now that Ross Thompson doesn't work for him anymore, I can – Tell them what I really think about it. It's hot garbage. Don't go out and get it. Maybe if it was free, I'd I'd play it. But other than that, um, anyway. So here you go. He's it's a it's a good model. Now this was one of the uh, lesser warcasters or junior warcasters, I guess they called them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really a nice model. I love the dynamic pose. I love the the folding of the cloaks and stuff like that here in the back. Um, just a great model and. So this is kind of where we came from, and what we were, what they they sculpted. This is his final form, and uh, this is Durant too. He's all grown up now. He's been through the painting, the uh, the protector, not the painting of Menoth, the pro, the protector of Menoth, um, sort of uh, Starfleet Academy, if you will. And he got his he got his warcast, real warcaster armor, and this is what he is. But one of the things, along with painting this model, that I wanted to talk a little bit about, John, was how did I get to this point? Because I did this with airbrush, and it looks like it. And it's not near where it needs to be, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some things you can do with an airbrush that are super sweet and totally legit. And the first thing we want to talk about is priming. And priming is something that is a very, very important step in the, the preparation of a model. We talked a little bit about it. I think last time we talked to you know with the scrapings and all of that nonsense in the assembly thing, but the, after you get done with your assembly, you have to prime the model because without priming, the paint doesn't stick as well. John, have you uh, have you seen models where people have not primed the model? Uh, I have, and I've got uh, multiple experiences. I have one buddy, Frank Thompson, who does not prime models, and they turn out freaking awesome. I don't know what he does, some sort of magic, but his models turn out awesome without priming. I've seen others where the paint just starts to flake off. So yeah, uh, and and he probably is doing a lot of steps without the priming. He's probably doing a lot of steps to prepare the metal to be ready to take the paint, which means he's probably doing washing and a lot of scrubbing, perhaps to make sure that there's not a bit of mold release anywhere on that model. On on these plastic models, these rustic models of privateer presses, I think that it's very important to prime your model. I think it's mm-hmm. in general a good practice. And my primer of of record, the one I enjoy the most, is from Badger. It's Styrolins, and it is a polyurethane primer that is applied with an airbrush. 
So what does that do for you? I, I think that the airbrush primer, in my opinion, gives me greater control over you know holding it and getting it into all the nooks and crannies. And it's, it's thin enough that I don't really have to worry about covering up the, the details of the model. And it, but it does a really good job of, of giving you a, a nice, even surface without covering up a lot of that detail. You know, th that's the biggest, for, for new primers and new people who are starting off in the hobby, applying too much primer is one of those early sins that you will commit. And mm -hmm. it will get gloppy, and it will get, it'll hide the detail. And folks, especially on these new Rustic models, there's not enough, the, the detail is a little on the shallow side, and you want to make sure that you don't do that. And this, this Styro lens, as you can see here on the painting cam, does a nice job of not hiding that detail. But, John, there's another step on here that I've already done on this model that kicks up the detail a little bit more. Yep, that looks like that Zenithal priming you've been talking about. Exactly. I'm a huge fan of this, folks. This is the Zenithal shading. Um, for those of you who are watching from the D6 generation, this is the thing that uh, that uh, uh, Craig referred to as black wash. But in what I do with it is not a washing technique. This is actually a an application of paint onto the primer. So uh, wh while I'm not disputing what Craig was was calling that technique, it may be just the opposite style of technique than what I'm what I'm doing here. Rather than applying taking a white paint uh, in a white primer, I should say, and then doing a black wash to it. I'm actually taking a light gray color and applying that to the to the black primer. And as you can see, it does a great job of picking up all of the detail that you see here, and it helps to highlight where your highlights ought to be. If it's a little redundant, but you know you get my drift. And uh, so, I mean, if you look here, if you, you when you do this, you got to be a little bold, John. You know, we talk about being bold on the show a lot, and mm -hmm. you got to be a little bold. You got to make a decision, and the decision you've got to make is where is the sun going to be on this model? Where am I going to be picking out? And from this model, and for actually this whole battle group, which is this is from the uh, Protectorate of Menoth battle group box, the new one that just came out with the Mark II, um, or Mark III, or whatever the fuck version of this game we're playing these days. Mark III. Remember, folks, we are a Mark III podcast, by the way. And if you see a brush head, you give them the Mark III, and then they know you're a brush head. Or you're from a gang in prison or something. And... Uh, the, I chose to, for this to come at it in this angle here, which is why you will notice that you'll see a little bit more whiteness on here, and you'll see a little bit more darkness back over here because it's catching that, okay? And this is going to be key in your next steps of painting, okay? So I've for my for my jun junior uh, for excuse me my journeyman league, this is as far as I'm taking my battle group right now is because I want to show my PG, I want to show, okay, here they are, they're assembled, they're primed, they're ready to party, okay? The next step is what I'm showing here. And this is the, th this is the next step in the airbrushing. And what I've got here is this is a, a guys, if, if you're at a, a major con and you have a, an airbrush, Badger Airbrush Company, these are not the greatest paints in history, by the way. I'm just going to put that out here. But they're damn good airbrush paints. And they have a very wide range, and they're very affordable for the whole range. I think I paid 100 bucks for 60 or 70 paints, and they're this size. They're, they're um, two-ounce bottles, I believe these are. Oh, no, so these are one-fluid-ounce bottles, okay? This is a shot. This is a shot of red. And uh, what I did here is you'll notice that you'll see some darker bits, down in here, and you'll see some lighter. Bits. I'm hoping the camera's picking up on this a little bit, but um, there are some, especially in the folds of the cloth, you'll see some darkness, and that zenithal shading that I showed on this one are what's creating that effect. Is you're you're painting the whole thing with an even a coat of the of the innards, which is what this is. This is called innards, which is very close to Privateer's Sanguine base. And I think that after I put a little bit of uh, Agrix Earthshade on it, it's going to turn into the same exact color. Um, the and now, what has that done for me here on this on this one is that it has radically changed how long it's going to take me to do this pro this painting. 
this is really going to step up because, John, one of the hardest things on protectorate models is they have very intricate armor. And this is going to allow me to, I've already done all this cloak work. So now all I need to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to catch all of these, these uh, gold trim parts. I'm going to catch up on all these on the, the shoulder pads. I'm going to come up here into this section and do all that. But all of that inside stuff that's really intricate it to get in there, and it, and honestly, it makes your model look like shit until you're ready to start, you know, painting it out. It, may, it hurts your kind of your, your psyche. Um, you know, as, as um, Archidan would say, you make a mess until it, until it, it looks good. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that really helps speed that process. And th that's a big deal. It helps you get to that next step where the model starts transforming in front of you. So um, that's that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about on the on the airbrush techniques. And this is just a light coating. You don't want to overdo it, folks. Don't get crazy with it. Just get kind of the to the color depth that you're trying to get to, and don't take it further because if you put too much on, you'll end up with a very uniform color, which is defeats then the whole purpose of doing the zenithal shading. The zenithal shading you want it to be a little bit on the transparent side. And airbrush paints will do that for you almost automatically. So, John, any thoughts on what I've said so far? No, no absolutely. I'm mean, honestly airbrush is a little outside of my uh, realm of expertise. Okay, so let's let's talk about where we're going with this model. Um, first off, so you know, as as uh, tell a little story here while I'm getting myself some some booze. Uh, Arkadan puts down here, work in progress is are the devil, and they are. And where I learned that was actually when I was a team leader for General Mills. And uh, uh, one of the older, more experienced team leaders told me one time, and, and it was about, we were talking about cleanups. Because after the run of cereal, you'd have to do a major cleanup. And the cleanup would take three shifts. And so 24 hours to clean the whole plant. And he goes, if, you, if the whole place does not look like garbage until the last four hours of the cleanup, you're doing it wrong. You should be destroying the place until the last four hours, and then it all comes together. That's a lot like painting a, a model, is that mm -hmm. it may look a little rough up until those last few steps, that, that detail work, where the, the, real, the, the real detail work is where the, the devil is. And that's, you know, you got to stick with it. you got to be strong. Now, like I said earlier in the show here, John, I have, this is the original Durant, and then this is his, his new buddy. So... What we want to do here is, in order to, we want to be conscious of our, of our color scheme. So I want my Durant 2 to, to echo my Durant 1. And I think that, folks, if you're a beginner painter, that's something that you want to be, you know, think a little bit about, is how do I want this to fit into my overall scheme? Now, um, this is another model I've done pretty recently, and this is the, the Hand of Judgment. And so, as you can see, Durant 1 in the Hand of Judgment, while being painted at relatively different times, are at least reminiscent of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we're going to echo that now out to here, but I want to pick up some of the detail that I have here on the Hand of Judgment. I like how these shoulder pads turned out with, and this is the coal black with the troll blood base highlights. And so, I'm going to echo that back over to here. And likewise, the, 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 I really like how these shoulder pads turned out with the gold and things like that. I'm going to try to bring that in over here to echo some of the shoulder pad work that I did in through here. So, And I want this spear to turn out exactly like the one he's got in the new one. I'm going to paint them identically because that is the same weapon he has, and I don't want it to change. So that's what we're going to start off with tonight. And those are some of the thoughts that I have when I'm sitting down to, to paint a model. So, um, John, what do we got for questions? Let's go ahead and let's do some. Uh, oh, thank you very much, by the way, on the jack. Uh, I'm very proud of how the Hand of Judgment turned out, and I love showing them off. So uh, that is the prototype for all my future uh, war jacks. My entire battle group that I'm going to do for my journeymen is going to be done like this. This is where she's headed, ladies and gentlemen. Sweet. Well, before your questions, I want to throw a couple comments. And 
taking your painting lessons from earlier models and adding them to later models is really the core of painting. And you can pick up a lot of tips by looking at um, GW used to do a whole bunch of articles. Like if you pick up their old painting books, any painting book on painting models, you can take little bits of what they do with the model and apply them to all your models. So if you find those cheap or whatever, just or if you have a website, someone giving you a little tutorial on something, pay attention, take a look at it. That's how you're going to get your, your next idea for uh, how to do something. And you can take it and apply it to so many things. Yep. Now... Uh, one of the things that I do is I like to use my wet palette an awful lot. And um, the reason I like to do that is because it's it's very good for blending and things like that. You're going to notice I use a I tend to use my metallics out of the pot because they tend to work a little bit better at, at a little bit thicker. But now, folks, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this. And I'm starting with some of the inner parts here, like the shoulder pads. i uh, going to put the gold in. I'm starting at the inside of it. I'm starting on the inside of the shoulder pad because that is going to allow me to, to if I make a mistake, to fix that as I work my way out. So Yeah, you can fix it quicker and easier. Uh, you paint, like you say, you paint like you dress, you know, inside out. I don't usually dress inside out, though, John. You know what I mean. I'm just, I'm just teasing. You know, that's the kind of rapport we have on the show, John. That's right. All right, I got to get All this right. back so I can actually talk. All right, here we go. Let's hit some questions here. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. Here we go. Let's uh, let's start with, uh, was it Michael Flanagan? He says, what painting have you wanted to do but not committed to? What painting have I wanted to do but I've not committed to do? Yeah, what paint scheme? Oh, I, I would love to do... I would love to do a green scheme like what I saw uh, Flight Medic do on the most recent Brushhead Gallery. The the green that he did on his uh, on some of that uh, Kador work that he had was breathtaking. And I just right now do not have a, a gr I don't have an army that that fits into it very well. Although although I will tell you that. I have yet to start my hunters, and that for the guild ball, and that might just be the perfect place to employ some of that green that I saw uh, Flight Medic do such an amazing job with. Yeah, your green armor bits look super cool, and then you can go with like brown cloaks or something like that. Yep, exactly. What about you, John? What have you been kind of had your eye on but have not yet committed to? Honestly, I don't. I don't actually look at paint schemes and go. I'd like to paint that because I'm fairly realistic in my skill level, or even maybe uh, humble in my skill level. I'm definitely still beginner painting wise. I could do some decent stuff. Um, I just don't generally commit to anything, anything that looks too complex. I'm sure I'm looking still forward. Doing to, simple. I'm sure looking forward to you getting your painting uh, set up back up there, buddy, so that you can kind of join us here on the Sunday night ex extravaganza and. Do some painting a lot right along with us. Yeah, well, I'm working on that. I got some downstairs painting done. Like I said, I've been painting some guys up. Uh, but yeah, I need to get back into practice so I can actually uh, get those skills leveling up. Yep, the only way to do it, folks, is to is that practice. It's it's, you know, I've got some someday I'll take some pictures and we'll show them here of the display cases over it here at Casa John, and you know I've painted a vast majority of the stuff that's in there. And that just means nothing more than it's just a lot of practice. Yep. All right. So next question. Let's keep them painting related for now. This is one from my boy uh, Frank Thompson. He says, "What do you do when you when you can't seem to paint, or when you've hit the wall and not sure what to do next for painting?" Um, you know, I hit that that wall more often than not, John. You know, people, the, you you think with a with a sun, with a show like we do here each and every week. That you wouldn't hit a wall, but you know, I we went. I've probably gone about two or three weeks now without picking up a paintbrush, because of life and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. The the the, the thing to do is that if you need to get yourself back into it, find a model. Maybe not even a model that necessarily is something you need, but that fires your imagination. Um, you know, the the hand of judgment. Let's take that one for example. That is such a beautiful model. Pick something that is. Or, or pick a model that has a technique that you want to try. You know, like when I was doing, uh, John, when I was doing the Glacier King, you know, that was a model that, was a model that 
that kind of had me ask the question, how can I do a good looking ice? And that's what led me to do that model the way that I did with the, the artificial water effect and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think the one way to get out of that is one, don't force it, but find something that is, is going to make that painting more of a play session for you than necessarily work. What are your thoughts, John? Um, honestly, if I hit that wall painting, I'll just go not paint for a while. Mm -hmm. um, that may not be the best way to do it, but uh, I'll go maybe assemble some stuff, play some video games, something just completely different, and chill out until I get that mojo. And if you're hitting the wall and you're painting something you don't want to paint, put it aside. You got to. Man, stay away from units. Yeah. You got to do units when you've got your mojo or you're committed to them. Go back and paint something you want to, something fun, even something simple. Sometimes just going like, this guy's going to be literally washes and dry brushes. I got to get your mojo back because it's simple. You see the progression quickly. You don't get frustrated. You're like, boom, I'm getting it done. This is awesome. I'm ready. Let's get back to it. You know, Craig Gallant, a uh, friend of the show from the D6 generation, posted on his Twitter um, at, at D6G uh, Craig of a model that he did using strictly a prime uh, with a very, like a brown base coat and a couple of dry brushes. And I'll tell you folks, it, it takes you a long ways towards something interesting. Maybe paint a board game piece. Just something to kind of take, give you something a little bit different. Maybe not something with a little less detail that will allow you to just do something fast and get a little bit of a, a little bit of instant gratification, if you will. Yeah, or if you want to keep it the same gate system, sometimes like uh, I've been <laughs> constantly picking up Convergence of Cyrus as the super simple, I just want to paint something and have it come out quickly because those guys look like they paint up super quick. Yep, exactly. I mean, the assembly will cause you to doubt the existence of God, but um, <sighs> other than that. Look, I have 20 Steel Hood Aberdeers and a full unit of this hunters with head swaps. Boom. I, I've paid my dues. I'm good. Uh, yes, you, uh, you are Iron Man. Oh, all right. Let's see. Where is next? Here's a funny one. Uh, it's a couple weeks old from uh, from DM Leach. He wants to know uh, when moving into a new house and the entire house is covered in boxes. How much time must pass before I can go to a new painting area without resulting in a divorce? Well, <laughs> given the fact that I have two divorces, um, and I have one. I have no friggin' idea. Um, I would say that the most important thing to do is to ensure that your wife slash significant other, partner, what have you, is, um, you know, take care of their needs first, um, you know, and, but at the same time, don't deny yourself too long. You want to make sure that um, you're, you're feeding, you're, you're feeding your, uh, your desires as well as, as, as hers. Um, I would say uh, set up, if, the, if she has a hobby area, let's say whatever that is, you know, set hers up and then set yours up. And then, you know, propose that as you're, as you're packing up, propose maybe a hobby night where you each do your hobbies just to give you a break from all that, all that silliness. What do you think, John? Oh, I totally agree. Um, uh, I, I would make sure all the essentials are unpacked, everything's good, and when you're like, you get to that point where you're unpacking all that stuff, it's like, it can wait, maybe then is a good time. Or, this is crazy. You could ask her, like, hey, is it a good time I can go paint now? Are we good? I find communication is the key, and in hindsight, uh, little life lessons here, I should have noticed when we weren't communicating as much that maybe we should have looked at two uh, other options. But, hindsight, 2020. Yeah. You know, folks, um, hindsight is 2020. And, uh, you know, it's it communication is the key. You know, one of the things that I love about my relationship with, with Belinda Librarian is that we talk a lot. We talk about where we are and what we need to do, and we give her 100% to, to both of each other. And she knows that my hobby time is important to me, and I know that there are times that I need to, you know, she's got a lot of things around her house that need, she needs help with, and we give it we, we give and take on that. Um, because what's what's more important than my little, uh, my little toy soldiers here? Uh, the fact that I've got a, a, a wonderful lady that, that respects me and treats me good. And, you know, I think that's the key. Just keep that communication going, and the world's your oyster. Indeed. All right. Uh, so next, let's get another. Uh, here you go. Here's a here's an airbrushy question that uh, maybe you can help with. There you go. 
Uh, Dan White wants to know, what do you thin matte medium worth with? Uh, he says more of an airbrush question than a otherwise uh, standard painting question. All right, so I'm gonna so total transparency here. I don't thin my paints for airbrushing. I use airbrush paints because I'm lazy, and because here's what I found is that unless I'm cracking open a brand new pot of P3, there's gonna be clumps in it. And clumps are the natural enemy of all airbrushes. The orifice that you're spraying these paints through is very, very small. And so what I tend to do is I use uh, these these pre-diluted airbrush paints in my airbrush, and I don't really use um, regular pot paints uh, for that reason. That being said, if you're going to... Diluting a, a matte medium generally means that... I mean, a matte medium is, tends to be a diluent anyway, so I would expect you'd be diluting it with water because acrylics are water-based paints and things like that. So there's probably only so much that you... I mean, you obviously don't want to use any type of uh, an acetone or any type of an organic solvent of any variety on that because it's not going to be compatible with your other paints. But um, that would be my guess. But, you know, really, when I've been when I've diluted pot paints in the past to extremely limited success, I might add... Uh, I've I've used a little bit of Windex, um, and uh, and or maybe a little bit of water. But guys, spend the money. Vallejo makes an entire line of airbrush paints. Um, the and I think that it, and Badger, as I already mentioned on this show, it makes some some really lovely airbrush paints. Use them; they're worth the money. Sean. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, uh, Slow Fuse Gaming in the chat room says, the best bet is to loot matte medium with a simple airbrush medium like Golden makes. Uh, so there you go. I listened to that person. I've never used <laughs> it, um, and it's better. It's worth more than that ridiculously long diatribe I just went off on. <laughs> but that's a good thing. You know, one note about stuff, if you don't know how to do something in the painting community, you can easily do a Google search or ask some people on, there's a whole bunch of forums that have painting section, ask somebody. I've found painters love to help people. Jump on Facebook, go to, you know, the War Machine Hordes painting group or Hobby Hangout or any one of those groups like that and ask them. Everyone will jump in and give you oh all the God. help. Oh my God, they're so, those, the ones that you mentioned, John, are just the best uh, as far as um, handing out different pieces of, of information you know my flight medic he's over there in the hobby hangouts all the time and he is going to give you all the secrets none of those folks ha hold back because they would just want everybody being awesome and that's that's the beautiful thing about the the hobby side of this community is that everybody is just wants to see everybody being the most cool person they can be making the most beautiful stuff because when we all make beautiful models everybody wins yep and honestly, it, from another point of view, if everyone starts making good models, even the guys who want to make the best models will start pushing themselves even harder. So that's even good. It'll push us all the higher levels. And folks, when you see these people making these amazing models, don't get discouraged. Because you know what? They they started off right where you're at. They they, they started off learning new techniques, and but and they stayed with it. And they, they practiced, and they... They ate their Wheaties and had their vitamins and all that kind of good stuff, and now look at them. Man, crazy talk. Yeah, John Webb always had the best point of view of it. It's like to, to become an expert in anything, it takes so many hours of practice. And you have to think, did you paint, have you painted that much? Uh, I haven't. No. I mean, hell, I'm at beginner level. I haven't even, to be honest, I've had very few lessons in painting. I'm more like picked up a brush and just started working around with stuff and you know, you work it up at Games Workshop and listen to people, especially some crazy good painters like Dave Taylor, you start hearing all sorts of tips that you just sort of take snippets of. My Michael Phelps may not have started swimming last week. Yeah, this just in. He started swimming a long time ago. Yeah, buddy. All right. I think that is the end of the actual painting painting. Let me. Oh, my God. Down. Thank God. No, the right. pressure's off. Um, I think that's all of them. We got some really old questions here I don't think we're ever going to get to, but nothing under the painting section, so it's all yeah, good. That's, that's fine. Let's hit some other ones. Um, so, uh, Trollton Heston, who's not with us tonight because apparently he had to work and he is dead tired, 
Uh, I want to know about bases. Do you approach preparing them as part of the assembly process or part of the painting process? I am the worst person in literally the universe to talk about this. Um, I am. I do it at the end, and my bases suck and are basic. So let me let let me show off here real quickly how bad my basing is. Um, let's let's look at the the hand of judgment, which might be one of my best paint jobs ever. And it's like four tufts and some friggin' sand. Don't do that to your models. So, John? Uh, I will counter that when looking at Durant next to them. As long as you are consistent, that will be good enough. I'll be honest. Like, I looked at them and I'm like, I can tell those guys are the same army because they have similar paint schemes and the basing matches perfectly. Basing matching is important. Mm hmm. But uh, I, I count basing as part of the assembly process because I actually. Uh, I paint the base before I paint the model in 99% of the time um, because it's easier for me to be careful around the feet of the model than it is for me to dry brush the base and be careful, you know, around the feet of the model the other way. Yeah. Um, I did paint one model where I was doing a test scheme, so I painted the model first. I went back and started doing the base. But uh, in general, I'll paint the base first. So I, I get it done as part of assembly. It's... It's, you know, assemble the model, do the base, then I prime it and do the, do the painting. Um, and you, whichever way you do it, just make sure you're good at it and, and try each way until you figure out which one works best for you. Yep, that's, that's sage advice. Yeah, because basing is one of the things I had problems with for years and years and years. I've got an entirely painted uh, Lord of the Rings army that I don't like because uh, the bases didn't turn out well. Uh, they were very basic. Uh, I actually lost a painting competition where my models were legitimately painted better than the other person's, but his bases were so much more interesting than mine. Yeah, and you know, it, it's it's hard. Um, it's the thing that yeah that a lot of my factions suffer from when I when I complain about my basing is that they've been painted at different times, and mm -hmm. my skills have leveled up over the years, and I'm a, I'm a better painter and I'm a better hobbyist than I than I was you know even a year ago and my but if I go and I do something really radical with my bases I'm going to ruin the look of my army uh, because the bases make such a difference now I'm also unwilling to go back and rebase literally my whole damn army um, because yeah. that, that that would take a month of Sundays and I'm not okay with that that, that's a legitimate project if you ever have to do that. Um, but, I mean, don't hesitate. If you feel like you've gotten to the point where you need to do that, don't hesitate to do it. Just go, all right, this is going to take me a while. I'm going to have to break my off bases. You're going to be careful. You're going to have to touch up some paint. Like, just be aware. Like, any project like that, be aware of what you're going to have to do. Make sure you're willing to commit to it because if you get halfway through, you're going to have models off bases and be like, oh, God, I don't want to do this anymore. And then you'll be really upset. Yep. So there you go. Um, bases are, are a tough thing. Um, I hope that there's helps. so many good resin bases out there. Take a look at those too. If you've got the money, but not necessarily the time or the creativity. Um, I like to get some pictures. I'll have to get some pictures of not brush the Jason's uh, models um, because his stuff is super good. He makes his own bases for almost everything. He'll take plastic card um, and cut it up and, you know, put it on bases, and it's crazy good, crazy inventive. Uh, I don't necessarily have time for all that, or even the creativity for all that. <laughs> it's good to know your limitations. Yes, wise man once said, "Man's got to know his limitations." That's right. Does Dirty Harry count? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's wise as hell. Yes. All right. So next is uh, one from last week. He says, "Tom Bell." He wants to know, do you magnetize heavy kits or to pick one choice? And then Andrew Waters immediately responded, never. It's the first commit of Wargamer. Thou shalt not waste money. Um, so, John, what's your take on that? And I'll tell mine. Um, so I have one magnetized jack. It was uh, painted by my, my boy Frank Thompson. He painted it, Mercenaries. We both played Mercenaries. He sent it to me because he's not really playing Mercenaries anymore. And it's magnetized to be a rover or a nomad. But only those two options, not a mule also. Uh, I generally will not magnetize because I've done it with a couple things. and just found it was less than ideal with kind of floppy arms. Um, it, 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 it takes me away. It, it 
it ruins my immersion a little bit. See, an arm just sort of droop down. Um, I really like the posing of the models, and honestly, um, I really want this company to keep in there. So if I need another jack, I will damn sure buy another jack. Yeah, I never magnetize anything. Um, the reason basically is that the magnetizing process takes me 45 times the amount of time it would take me to assemble an, an entire another kit. So it saves me no time. It is a little bit more money. The I, I'm blessed that that economic decision is not one that I necessarily need to worry about, but I'll be very honest with you that I would rather make the decision to not spend the extra money. I mean, I, I would make the decision to to buy the next model rather than kind of get a model that doesn't really work for me terribly well. I mean, it's f floppy floppy jacks make me sad. Yeah. So and and, and Draco Stragoon says not to mention if you want to give the model real personality. That does not go with the magnetizing aspects of it. And that's totally true. Yep, absolutely. 100% agreement. So I would say save your pennies, you know, donate the plasma, and get the extra kit. Well, that being said, if you're making some extravagant list, like, uh, you know, let's say you're making the old, uh, you know, a murder of Griffins list, and you're like, seven Griffins, but you've got parts for other stuff. And this is a bad example because they don't come in there, but assume they did. Uh, magnetizing those because you have way more than you're going to use in most lists would be fine. Yeah. You know, your your fourth Warjack kit, your third Warjack kit, whatever, you probably can magnetize that one. Uh, and some models are actually have a big enough position where the arm goes in that you could magnetize and put a pin. There's a trick for you. Put a magnet and a little pin in the arm, and you'll get it to do that, and you won't get droopy arms in them. The problem is it'll work with some GW models. It doesn't work so much with PP models because that point of contact is so small that a magnet stretch all you can do. Yeah, I, I've seen that trick done before. And when it when you have a model that 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 is you're you're capable of doing that, that is a really good solution. But as you said, that is a it is a little bit more rare with privateer ones to be able to do or, that. Or if you if you need if you want to do it and you're not sure about the magnet stuff, you know magnets. How do they work? Instead, you can actually pin the model. Uh, I have some uh, remotes for Infinity where I pin the weapon option so I can pull the pin out. And I made it a nice long pin. I can pull the weapon out and put different weapon on because at this time, I'm not so into Infinity that I want to buy, you know, several of those drone kits and make lots of drones with resin bases all at once. I'll be happy right now just pulling the pin out and changing the model if I need to. Yep, makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. All right, so next is, let's, uh, related, Kevin Brooke wants to know what we think of the new plastic jacks. And that's new with the quotation marks. They're not that new, but new enough. I hate rustic with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. Um, if they are, if you're talking about plastics that are uh, polystyrene, I'm all in. Um, I hate rustic with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. Uh, I'm looking forward to rustic jacks. I haven't seen any yet for my factions. Yeah. But uh, let's be honest, I haven't bought a new jack kit in a while because mercenaries, how many mules do I fucking need? Uh, how many nomads do I need? Yes, they're 11 points, but I can put three down at any point. I think that's probably good right now. Yeah. So, but, I mean, uh, I'll, go ahead. I'm def definitely looking forward to them because if they like do that for the mangler, I'm in. I have uh, one and a half manglers. Thank you, PP, for not sending my part yet. Um, Design space. But I, yeah, I will happily make another Mangler if they make a plastic kit. Looking forward to it. And uh, I'll give a good review then. But until then, Rustic is the devil. And it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it was... So I went through and was I built this plastic battle box. And I will say that at least the Protectorate bottle, battle box that came with the the yellow dye that they used for the or the cream colored that they used for the uh, battle box did not adversely affect the density of the plastic near like how it has on what I've heard the K, the Kador box um, mm -hmm. but you know it's 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 here it's what we're gonna have to deal with if you want privateer press jacks it's what you're gonna be dealing with until you know they make like the the hard plastic kits like uh, the Indicter and the Guardian, which I hear is on, on the way at some point, um, and, and the, I don't know, the Mad Dog and some of the other ones. I don't know. There's, there's a few of them out there. 
but those are those are beautiful and super sweet. Can't wait to get them. Oh, and uh, Legionnaires asked me, not uh, have I not tried the Rover? I have tried the Rover. Rover's in my Magnus Magnus Two list. I love the Rover. I like the Rover in Last Edition. He's got a very good spot in the stable of Merc Jacks. Even better now that he is, you know, a little more competitive. And uh, he's a good Jack. Um, I own two. I've got a Metal One converted out of a Nomad. Uh, I was inspired from the pose of my first Nomad to have him up with his shield sort of blocking and his axe back about to wax him full in the face. So uh, since my Nomad was kind of in that position, I just took the Metal One and added the rover bits to it and said, boom, there's another rover. Boom. We love the word boom on this show. Boom, indeed. So, I mean, look at, guys, folks, take a look. This is literally, what, a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes worth of painting on this guy? And mm-hmm. he's he's looking pretty sweet so far. Yeah, he's coming together. The the uh, I find, honestly, once you get that base down, everything starts going quicker. Like you said, work in project, progress, it's the devil. It is the devil. But it's a devil you can live with. And, you know, the there's a lot of muted tones in these. But what we're going to do with this later on, and it's going to be something I'll probably post on the website, is we're going to come back to this, and we're going to perk this up with some splashes of bright color. The X's, uh, excuse me, the um, X's, the Menifixes are going to be a bright red to, to kind of give it some color. And there are some jewels and stuff on here that we're going to use. We're going to pop them out, you know, greens and things like that to give it, to give you a little bit more detail on it. And I see that my 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 uh, sword here is not terribly happy, so I'm going to have to do something about that. But anyway, looking good. We're co- we're we're coming along just fine and dandy on this guy. Are you going to use the gemstone paint on those gems, or you got an older technique? I will try them uh, and see how it goes. <laughs> um, it was not. I, I wasn't super impressed with the gemstone stuff I did on my uh, Helena, but we'll okay. we'll do the best I can with it. So uh, I'm trying a bold experiment. I bought one of the blues, and I'm going to try painting an entire Retribution Jack in that. Nice. Maybe the, some of the inner parts and see what that does because I've been super wishy-washy on my ret paint scheme, flipping and flopping and all that. And uh, you I mean, I really as, wish I Are you going to use it as a base coat? Look. Are you going to use it as a base, base coat? Yeah. Holy shit balls. That's bold. We'll see what that looks like. That's bold. Well, let's be honest. I have seven griffins, and when I get Helena, I'll have an eighth griffin. I do not need that many. Yep. Time for bold moves. That's right. Bold move griffin. That's another good note. If you got one of those extra models, you can always fix it up. You can always use a test. Uh, sometimes even take, I've mentioned this before, take that cheap bones model you got. Take that cheap model just randomly. Any model that has similar sections to the model you want to paint is a great test model. Got to be bold, man. Got to get them bold colors on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, eBay is a good place to look for that too. If you're looking at eBay, you get an extra model in that uh, whole uh, extra model in that whole you know lot of models. Maybe try it on that. Get bold. And uh, so, in all caps, Brush is telling me to use a silver base coat. Yes. Then James Stone. Are you sure? I kind of yes. want to try it on natural, but if you're saying 100 percent. I might try it that way instead. It, it, it from what I've told from what I'm told that is how you use that paint. So there you go, silver gemstone. Maybe I'll even go a little darker than silver. Maybe I'll use a darker metal color to maybe get a little darker blue color. Maybe I'll even go so bold as to paint different parts of it different metals and see how it works. There you go. I like that. That's bold. That's good. Yeah. I mean, again, it's my. Seventh, soon to be eighth Griffin. Boom. I'll I'll be fine if it turns out like crap. It'll it, it'll just be like up. Oh, turn like crap. It's in simple green. <laughs> you can't let little stuff like that stop you from trying. Innovation doesn't wait. Nope. You know I hear that Edison guy. He broke a lot of shit before he came up with the uh, the internet. Uh, I'm more of a Tesla fan than an Edison fan. Well, Tesla he came up with. Uh... He broke thousands of, of light bulbs before he invented the car. Yes, and, and the death ray. The death ray, that's right. He had he was, the, Which is like a manta ray, but deathier. But deathier, yes, indeed. All right, so I've got some simple questions here. Let's get the really simple ones down. From Sarah Jane Chu, who is still giving me good advice out of the chat room. Oh, she's an amazing person. This is from a couple weeks ago. Sorry, Sarah, we didn't have time during the original one you put him in for. 
do you know where Scorn is going? Yes, right into the uh, right into the barter town. <laughs> Let's just say they're in a handbasket. Yeah, not. I'm sorry for Scorn. I really am. Um, as I, president I, of War Machine and Hordes, I apologize. I feel like you could. I feel like they're playable, and and people are overreacting. But damn, it's a lot of changes to take all at once, and that's kind of uncool. Uh, I'd actually love to. Uh, give them a shot but i'm totally not in the market for another army i've still got minions i have to put together at some point yeah you know um ben lang who used to be uh here in the chicago area played a lot of scorn and his scorn which i loved the paint jobs he had on him went up on barter went, went up for sale cheap and i still avoided him yeah um they'll be okay you gotta have faith it takes a little time for everyone to figure out where they're going i mean honestly i've been talking to some of the locals uh, who are a bit more competitive. And the whole meta is in flux. I mean, everyone's going for these quick assassinations because no one has a super good idea what everything does. So a lot of quick assassinations are happening. Um, and, you know, people don't haven't, haven't felt the whole thing out. They will be fine as soon as everyone figures them out. But for right now, I mean, I'm, I'm just loving this game because... I can literally put down whatever I bloody well please, and I'm, I know I'm going to see something different on the other side of the table, and it's really, really f a fun time to play War Machine right now. Just loving it, having a great time. I'm having some of the most, most fun games I've had in a long, long time right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm considering things I haven't. And actually, I'm going to skip to a question that's in that particular vein. Pablo Miguel, boy, wants to know... Has the new Mark III made you consider playing something you've never touched in Mark II? Oh, God, yeah. I, I don't think I played Idrian's, like, but twice in all of Mark II and hated them. In Mark III, I don't know how to build a list without them. They're, they're you amazing. hated Idrian's in Mark II? Oh, my God. They, they, well, I didn't, I didn't hate them. I just didn't get them into my list. Oh, um, gosh. They're, but, you know, that... Okay, wait. Now, the... They were not as awesome as they are now. Let's be honest. Uh, I, I will honestly say they were awesomer. Oh, I disagree. Dude, honestly, the best order that isn't in Mark III at all that I've seen... Uh, assault and Battery. Is, ...is Assault and Battery. B with Prey, being able to shoot and then charge that unit or another unit. Oh, God, I wish they had that. I... I bought two units to play them with Magnus 1 and 2 because I'm like, damn it, they're super awesome. I will get them in a damn list. Yeah, Assault and Battery is pretty good, and I do miss that. Um, but they they did come down in, in relative price a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that that combination with uh, having them come down in price a little bit, man, they are so good. Man, oh, I, yeah. th for me, that was the unit that I couldn't seem to figure out a way to get them into my list. That now I am just loving I, every second of. I can't get them out of my lists. Oh, how could you? How could you? Like, in, a, in a protectorate list where they get to take advantage of all of the in infection spells, especially as Mark III has shifted to a much stronger infaction uh, spell list type stuff. Oh my God! So it's it's such hot, dirty sex. Yeah, no doubt. Um, my big one is the Horgan Hold Artillery Corps. Or ah. I like to call it the one one unit in mercenaries I actually do not own, but damn if it's not a high on my list now because that went from literally worse than Hern and John for the same points to an actual legitimate legitimate piece that you you have to own. It's it's wonderful. I have uh, I have one and it's painted up, and uh, it's. It's really it's, fun. I haven't played, but but John, I'm so enamored with everything else going on. I just haven't found time to come over to Mercs yet. Oh, and I, I have, don't want to leave Mercs. I know, except for, except for the caster part. But I love a new caster because our, so ours didn't change that terribly, with the exception of Mad Hammer. But I played so much Mad Hammer, I feel like they leave him on the shelf for a bit. God. Um, but you know, oh, the love and everything in Mercs. I am Except so Colossals. Colossals are kind of... Hmm. I mean, look look where this model has gotten in such a short amount of time. Oh, and, yeah. and folks, oh. that is all about 
the that that is literally all about that airbrush base coat that I did on these guys. It is it is rev, guys. You got if you're gonna s- spend a, some money on your hobby, get yourself a, an airbrush. You will not regret it. Anyway, yep. I'm sorry. I'm just going since on. Brush on it, since brushure is totally on me about making sure she asks other questions from that particular batch. Okay, please. I'll go with the second one, which is, what do you know about the new faction? What do I know about the new faction? The new faction is, you know, Dan Vanderkoy uh, from Beer Machine and the Beer PG knows more about it than I do. And what he's talking about is it's it's going to be probably a very much like Convergence as far as it's going to be a limited release. You're not going to get a full faction out of it. Um, it's going to have a, from what I've heard from Jay Larson's Twitter feed, uh, that it's going to have some type of a different feat mechanic than what we're used to seeing, which to me sounds like multiple turn or um, something that when you do your feet, something else happens or something like that. So I think that there's some of that coming at it. The um, But it is a faction that is in either the Monster Nomicon or it's in the IKRPG stuff that is some very old stuff. Some very old uh, you know, magic y shit from back in the day. It's it it's as old as Menoth or something like that. So it's it's serious business. Uh, and we're gonna be seeing more of it probably before too long because if it's a faction, they're gonna want you to buy it. And that means they're gonna talk about it a lot. So give it some time here. I think they're probably still experimenting with design space on it. And uh, once they get the design space figured out, coming at you. You've heard way more about it than I have. I've heard literally nothing. But to be fair, I haven't asked my my contact for any information on it because I'm not super interested. There's tons of old stuff I still need to go through. Good Lord. Honestly, Mark Three coming out was the bad time to announce that because you got so much other stuff to, to look forward to right now. Well... At least they didn't make a big mistake because they barely talked about anything. So, <laughs> fair enough. There you go, man. I am just loving how this guy's coming together. All right. So next question from Sarah Jane Chu. Still that guy, that girl. It's it's the old Mary Kill fuck. Oh, there you go. It's Abby to Makeda Mortnebra. Holy oh. cow! She went to a she went to a murderer's role of oh my god, didn't she? Yep. Um. So, so, God, okay, Makeda is Mary because the other two are simply unacceptable. Um, I'll fuck um, Abby because that that's just an experience. And kill Morton Nebra because she's already dead. And she just, that, that headpiece, it's kind of freaking me out. I cannot argue with your logic. I had Morton Ever and Abby switch, but your logic also makes sense. As much sense as the question did, at least. Yes. Uh, I mean, the consensus is that you marry Makeda. You're going places then. And then the other two, he's just... <laughs> well, Mika- let's face it. Makeda's the closest thing to marrying, marrying material in that list. Yep. Not Abby. Holy moly. She Holy is shit, no. Fine. Holy shit, no. It's like, whoa, you, she's she's like I mean, the one at the club you picked up that you regret. I know Morton Ebers dead and all, but I'm still looking at Abby going, mm. no, nope. not with someone else's stick. Mm-mm. No. There you go. All right, so her final question is, what is your favorite way to eat chicken? Ooh, I got a new one on this one, John. Oh, shit. I got a new one on this one. I invented this. I literally invented this uh, this recipe this week big deal um so those of you who are at home i want you to be sitting down i want you to take notes on this because this is fucking legit all right what you want to do is you want to take some chicken thighs first off you always start with chicken thighs boneless chicken thighs are the are the best kept secret in all of chickendom and the then what you do is you take and you put in um you take there's a uh, a dry cured ham that's german called speck S P E C K, okay, speck, and you take and you wrap that around the chicken thigh, and you put toothpicks through it, so that it holds it on there. 
So it's like a bacon wrapped chicken thigh. And you put it on the grill. And it's freaking mind blowing. It'll it'll blow you away. It's so delicious. Um, nine out of ten people will say it's delicious. And the tenth person you shouldn't even talk about. But it is it's really good. Um, highly recommend it. You can call it Speck Chicken, or if you want, Menoth John Chicken. What's your favorite, John? Um, honestly, I really like grilled chicken. I do a lot of grilling chicken when I make it. Uh, uh, super simple. Let's be honest. Simple is the watchword for a lot of my cooking. Yep. But uh, can't argue with a good grilled chicken. Do you uh, do you do a dry rub or any other technique on it, John? Uh, I have both marinated it beforehand and actually marinated it in the pan, which I know you're not supposed to do, but yeah. sometimes I'm cooking it and I'm like, eh, I don't want plain chicken. Where's my barbecue sauce? Squirt. All right, cook it that shit up. All right, so I'm going to give you a secret here. See if you can find this oh. in your local in your local grocery store. Uh, do you guys have Famous Dave's Barbecue out by you? Hell yes. Okay. Famous Dave's Steak and Hamburger Dry um, Dry Seasoning. Okay, it'll be in your seasoning session. Put that on your chicken. You're gonna love me for it. You're gonna love me for it. That stuff. It's for steak and stuff like that. But I'm gonna promise you that on uh, on a on a piece of chicken, it's gonna be legit. You're gonna love it. That is also, by the way, my favorite hamburger seasoning as well. So get that on there and then grill that shit up and say thank you, Menoth John, when you when you when you eat that. You'll notice I was taking notes there. I did notice that. And uh, and Belinda Librarian will tell you, if I may not know a lot, but I know me some grilling. So you listen right on here. Well, I grill in a pan, not in a grill, because we don't have a grill yet. Well, you but can, I have a backyard, so a grill is in the future. Well, you can uh, you can grill some shit there. You can put a, you can put that in the oven, and it'll your your oven will thank you. And the mm-hmm. people who might be down the hallway will still like you because. It won't taste like bad things. It'll taste. It'll smell good. Hey, so. no hallway. Remember, I'm in a townhouse now, not an apartment. Well, fucking a. This thumbs up here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're getting all crazy. Oh. Right now. So let's see. Um, we'll get a quick one here, but I imagine we're going to take care of another future episode with Rich Broutman. But Silver Saint Seven wants to know, what do you think of the Ghost Sniper? It's like the saltiest bottle in Rats. I don't know. Three points of damage. Um, that's pretty good. It's got stealth. You you know mm-hmm. sometimes that that three points of damage is situa- situationally brilliant. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't slam it at all. I've I've put it in in plenty of lists. There there are times when you want to reach out and touch someone from 14 inches away and just put three damage on them, and mm-hmm. they they are the model to do that. They're not very expensive, and they're very they've got a nice rat. You make them aim. They're up to rat I believe nine. If they if they mm-hmm. aim, they're good. John. Yeah, I agree. I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't had any any thoughts of them being bad at all. I love them. I said they look solid, just like they were before. Seems good. Yeah, three three points of instant damage that avoids armor in a world where armor skew is such a prevalent thing. I think is something yeah. you need to consider in your lists. So, yeah. but uh, we'll be honest. I think uh, me, you, and Rich should work on the. I think we're going to do that. Ret. Uh, that Rat Mark III episode. How do you want to do that one, John? Do you want to do it as a regular oh. Sunday Night Extravaganza, or do you want to do it as a special? I don't know. Whatever you decide, just let me know. I've got a format already uh, already thought up for that, uh, something where you can wrap uh, around so we're not talking forever and ever about Rhett. A little bit of, a little bit of structure to our madness. Oh, shut up. You're getting all crazy and shit on me now. I know. I've had this for a while. I thought up, I'm like, I think this is a good good format for that. <laughs> I know I know that uh, Rich will be down for it. Oh, by the way, speaking of Rich Broughtman, I have heard tell that Foxy Brown is coming back to uh, Beer PG. <laughs> oh, that should be a hoot. Yep, should be good times. All right, so there you go. It is. Uh, it's eight fourteen, John. I'm yeah. I'm getting to a point here where I don't know that I want to continue a whole lot more on this model because I want to stay focused. I want to stay sharp. I want to keep my mojo. I want to make sure that. Everything is coming forward the way it ought to. Um, so I think we're going to talk about some movies here in just about 10 seconds. Um, I want to thank all the Brushheads for all the great questions. Uh, we can't do this show without questions, because if we did, the, let's face it, the content wouldn't be as good as it is. Um, so it, you really do give us a lot of opportunity to talk about a lot of different things. So thank you, each and every one of you that submitted a question. 
and I am vamping a little bit here while I finish a little bit of detail work. But hey, and remember, even if we don't ask for a question, you can volunteer questions at any point. Either John will notice it and tell me, or I'll notice it, and we'll put it in the list for next time so that we'll get to your question eventually. So there you go, folks. There is Durant 2 for really just getting three colors on him. We got a little bit of a couple different color of gold medals. We got some silver medals on him. A lot of medals. We got some coal black on him because we're going to turn that coal black into some really cool highlights once we get um, past here, past this initial stage. We're going to come over here. We're going to bring up the old media section now. Oh, my God, John. You know, it's hard to believe that we've already blasted through the first 45 minutes of this show or however how I know. long. Oh, well, it's actually been more than that. It's like 70 minutes or something. I don't know. We it, There's math involved, and I can't be bothered. Yeah, we've flown through it, and, boy, do we have a lot of stuff on the uh, on the plate here for you now. Uh do you want me to start, or do you want to start with uh, your movie? Um, well, let's see. What the hell did I... Oh, yeah, let's just real quickly talk about what I watched. I watched The Core again, and uh, it's a terrible movie, and it's worse than I remember. <laughs> um, it is... I, I used to like it because the movie had used the term unobtainium, which is a... Um, it's an old engineering joke. Uh, what's it made out of? Oh, it's made out of unobtainium. You know, it's right there with the with the right-handed screwdriver and the left-handed crescent wrench, and the sky hook. As far as old and the smoke shifters, the smoke shifters. Don't smoke, forget those. Yeah, I gotta get the smoke shifters in there. Um, you know, you can send a guy, you know, send a noob down to the maintenance shop to get a left-handed crescent wrench, and watch hilarity break out. Uh, but the uh, the core is a terrible movie, and it ended the career of Hillary Swank, and should have ended the career of Stanley Tucci. Uh, but he got into the Hunger Games and really didn't do much more. But he was at least entertaining in the Hunger Games. And um, they go to the they go to the center of the Earth and they use atomic bombs to restart the spinning of the core <laughs> of the Earth. Somehow, it doesn't sound any more palatable like that. It's there's no science involved. Um, I would love, you know, I'm trying to remember back. I saw Neil deGrasse Tyson live, and I think he may have mentioned the core. But you know, I'm sure it wasn't with anything good in mind. So, ladies and gentlemen, four shots of crack in the core. Um, let's move on to you, John. John, you've got some some better things to talk about. Remember, folks, patreon.com slash menothjohn. If you want to get the co-host corner where he's going to talk about a uh, Korean flick, uh, the uh, the War of the Arrows. Arrows. Yeah, I couldn't read my own writing. <laughs> so yeah, so that's on the co corner for this next one, and then the one after that I'm going to talk about Night and Day, which is Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz, and showed up at the cheapo DVD uh, bucket, so I'm in on that. There you go. Uh, so God, I saw some stuff. I'm still watching Robotech Macross Saga on Amazon Prime, which is mm -hmm. super awesome. Uh, it's remastered. I don't know if I mentioned that the first time I was talking about it, so. The sound's been upgraded. They've changed a couple of visuals. They even made the the intro, if anyone like me remembers the entire intro to Robotech, off the top of the head, and made it only include stuff from the Macross saga. So hmm. anyone new was like, "What? what's this going? I don't recognize any of this other stuff. What's going on? Um, so it's kind of cool. Good. Um, still good. enjoying that. Um, it, it pans out good. It's still a very, very adult series, something nominally aimed at kids um no spoilers because the series is like 30 fucking years old uh i just got past the episode where roy poker dies and boy it's still rough to see uh you know he may be a secondary character but he's a one of the highest secondary characters just eat it not even in like a heroic super fashion just it happens because it's war yeah i have not watched macross macross yet and i apologize for that but i'm going to yeah, it's it's one of those seminal animes that I have not seen that I need to cross that off my list, and maybe that's a good way for me to bring. You know, it's not for kids, obviously, uh, as you mentioned, but totally for kids actually because it it's all handled very seriously. Well, that's good. It's never blown off. It's like killing is never like, ha, I got him. You know, it's it's all well, it's it's handled very well. Good. Well, I maybe I'll sit down with uh with Chuck, and we'll watch Macross together. It's it's pretty good. It's a it's a little dated, but uh, it's still a good time. Yeah, that, nothing wrong with dated. Uh, so am I. 
Well, let's make sure we get this one out of the way because this is the one you were interested in talking about. Uh, my, I took my mom to see Star Trek Beyond. Yeah. Uh, she went to hang out and uh, and she's I uh, gave her some some movie times. She's like, well, let's see either Ghostbusters or Star Trek Beyond, uh, and I'd rather see Star Trek Beyond a second time than Ghostbusters at first. So she saw that, and uh, after the movie, she let me know that she'd never seen any of the remakes. Any, any of the, uh, the the new movies? Now, that's interesting, because I'm I'm a fan of the reboots. I do mm-hmm. like the new cast. Um, and, you know, darn tragedy that we lost um, we lost Chekhov. Um, yeah. What, what, what a terrible shame. And, uh, but what was, how did she react to the reboots? Obviously, she has knowledge of the first, the, the other two casts and all that kind oh, of yeah, stuff. Oh, she, yeah, she grew up young adult, uh, you know, early 20s with, with Star Trek, so she loved it. Um, she took me to see Wrath of Khan. We were out at the the beach when that came out, and we saw it there in uh, probably Nags Head, North Carolina, when we were down there. So she loved <laughs> Star Trek, but she loved it. She she could follow the whole thing. She was a little confused about the whole you know reboot. She didn't realize it was a reboot and that these were the same characters in a different timeline because the whole yeah double Spock thing. And yeah. they don't do a lot on that. They do, of course, you know mention that Leonard Nimoy has died. So they work that in. So that people aren't like, well, why isn't he showing up again? Well, well it's because he's kind of dead. He, he was a very old Vulcan, too, so it's not, like, unsurprising. Yeah. They worked that in, and she really loved the whole thing. She said she loved the visuals. She said she was in awe the entire time. Nice. Um, we, we were also in the second row, and luckily this theater, the second row, is far enough back that it doesn't, uh, it's not, it's not, you know, overwhelming. Nice. <clears throat> but she really liked it and 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 thought it was a great movie. You know, I'm thinking that this might be an opportunity now that Belinda's done with her IT class this uh, this summer. Perhaps it's time for us to catch up on some of these movies. I still have not seen um, the Star Trek movie, and I could probably uh, sp- talk to my uh, my ex and get my older boy if he hasn't seen it. We could probably do it all as a family some evening. So maybe yeah, that- maybe maybe tomorrow even. It's a good movie. I saw it a second time. Now, we saw it at the Cheap Theater, which is funny because it's still playing at the big theaters, too. But I would rather pay, you know, a couple bucks for, for, for us to see it rather than a bun- bunch of bucks. I mean, it's almost half price there. And it was super, it's still super good the second time. Um, you know, still, I'm still going to give it, you know, maybe one shot of crack, and it was still a great time. Terrific. That's one, that's a, that is a terrific review there, John. You also saw um, you went you went back into the in, in into some of the old classics of the action genre. Maybe maybe Ocean's Eleven doesn't count as that, but Ocean's Eleven is is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it is great. And it's, this is the this is not the original. This is the no, remake is with the George remake. Clooney and Brad Pitt. And, and and I mean, whatever. It it was it is a much better movie than the original. So I hear. I haven't seen it though. There is a four pack that has all four Ocean movies together that I'm thinking about picking up because I only own Oceans 3 and I'll happily get rid of that for a four pack of all of them. Yeah. Um, but right now Oceans 11 is available for free on Amazon Prime. Nice. Found that flipping through on Thursday. I'm like, oh oh, my I'm watching god. this. Oh my god, I'm watching that with the kids for sure. It's it's a great movie. It hits all the right notes. This is how you use an ensemble cast. Lots of people, Bernie Mac, rest in peace. Oh. Um, they they all get their moments. They Don all do Cheadle. a good job. It's a smart, fun story. It it's a great movie. I mean, there's no way about it. Yep. It's, it's, this hit all the notes. Uh, it kind of makes the second movie a little sadder because it did not hit all the notes. But the third movie was a better, closer return to form. Okay. Um, I have Ocean's not seen Eleven. Three. Man, you got zero shots of crack, and you got to check that out. Yeah, it's terrific. It. it is the epitome of a heist movie. It is, I think, the best heist movie I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. It's. It's great. It doesn't take it so seriously. It's not violent. Which is no, great. Not even a little bit. It's hilarious. Nope. And the 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 the, uh, the chemistry between Clooney and uh, and Brad Pitt. Um, it's great. Is yes. amazing. They are perfect together. They are meant to be together on the screen. Y- you feel like these guys know each other. These guys have been friends for years. Mm-hmm. It's got Don Cheadle, and you cannot go wrong with more Don Cheadle. Oh, he agreed. Has a good British accent. Um, as as good as Don Cheadle is as War Machine, he's so good in this movie. As Basher, the Basher, are, yeah, he's great. That Cockney but, accent of his is just killer. In fact, maybe the I hate to say this, but uh, 
unfortunately, probably the worst one in this is the female lead, who's got her name is escape me right this second. Pretty woman. Um, God, now you God killed damn me. It. <laughs> killed one. us both. That's all right. I'm gonna have the 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 yeah the the uh, prostitute from from Pretty Woman. Yeah, she's not a prostitute in this one. Oh, he's yeah. he's interneting. Wait up! Wait, uh, the coast is I interneting. Have to, I have to internet this because it's Julia Roberts. Me nuts. Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. There you go. There you go. Um, honestly, this is about the point where something was wrong with her lips. I don't know what it is. They just look wrong. Hmm. She had something done to them, and she's not bad, but she's probably the weakest part of this cast. Well, I mean that's saying something. The, the, this cast is amazing. Even, even Andy Garcia as the bad guy is great. Yeah, He's Andy Garcia does scenery. a great job. It's awesome. No, brush you are not Sandra Bullock. Good Jesus Lord, friggin' that. Christ, no. <laughs> this isn't Speed. This is Ocean's Eleven, darling. <laughs> oh, so yeah, zero shots of crack, and it's it's a great movie. Not even, not even close to being a half a shot or anything. It's it's great. So I I I, I can't recommend Ocean's Eleven. Enough. I, I now that I know that it's for free, I'm I'm totally oh, yeah. gonna get over there and get that. It's it's such a value at free. Holy moly! And uh, then I also um, uh, Creekins, the roommate, has uh, got her tattoo worked on. She's got this giant squid down the side of her body, so she's a little tender and was an invalid last night. And uh, so uh, her one of her other friends is leaving and found out she hadn't seen Red, so we popped that in and watched that right away. Oh, Red's terrific. It's great. We reviewed it before. It's still great. She, she loved every moment of it. Red's a lot of fun. She, she guessed a lot of the plot points, but that's not Who sort of the cares? point of that movie. You need to be able to guess it. And it's like, it's just a hoot. Oh, it's it, it it's all the folks you want to see in a movie doing the shit that you want. Jesus Malkovich steals that movie. He does. God. But everyone's good in that, you know, yes. from all the way down to Carl Urban plays his role great. He's yep. likable when he needs to yeah. be likable. You're like, it's great. Red's super fun. Super yeah. fun. And then the final thing I need to talk about, because how can I not? The Rogue One trailer. <sighs> oh, my God. So it's super cool. It, it kind of introduces you to the uh, the characters, but not in any, any major way. You just get to see most of them. Uh, Donnie Yen is a blind guy with a staff. I don't know if he's got the force or not, but he is badass. Um, All right, so it just looks like it's going to be fun. So I haven't watched it because I don't watch spoilers related to Star Wars franchise. Okay, am I going to be sad if I turn this on, John? Not at all. There's no spo- There's nothing in this thing that you don't already know by the fact that it's a bunch of people. They're going to go find the plans for the Death Star. That's the premise of the movie. Well, we knew that That's already. That's all though. you see. But yes. we already knew that, and um, so. All right, well, after the show's over, I'm going to go back that way, and uh, we're going to, I'm going to turn it on with my boy, and we're going to watch it together. There's one thing at the end that people might call a spoiler, but it's not because it's been advertised on the Internet the whole time. And actually, I feel it's unnecessary. Okay. So when you get to that, the absolute end of it, and they show something, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I feel that's unnecessary. It didn't be in the movie, but they did it for the wide audience. It's not for me. That's fine. But... I give that trailer zero shot to crack, and I've already watched it about 20 times. I'm going to watch it again after the show. Well, I'm going to watch it with my boy after the show. What the hell? We'll give it a shot. Um, you know, John, what, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I think that was all the ones we talked about as far as on the uh, on the show here. Yeah, that was a heck of a movie week for me. It was. It was a good movie week for you. Um, you know, I, I, I expect that I'm going to try and drag the family out to go see a little Star Trek action later on today. Uh, mm-hmm. Not later on today, but later on this week. Um <laughs> You know, looking forward to later on this week, I'm going to get to hopefully play a game with the Minister of Great Times, Ryan. Uh, he's coming down to the Milwaukee area. It's going to be super amazing and totally sweet. Uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to switch this back over to the face cam. Boom. Get over here. Uh, hope everybody's enjoyed the show, to be honest. Um, it was, uh, I hope, informative. Did a lot of painting. Got a long way on Tristan. i um, very happy with how he's turning out. I mean, you know, folks... To be very honest, it's rare for me to feel this positive about a, a, a model at this current state. And I'm pretty happy about it. So uh, we're going to continue on. We've got a little bit more base cutting to do on him. 
Uh, and then I need to figure out a few things that are going to make him pop. I've got a cloak here that needs to be a different color than the rest of the cloaks. And we're going to figure that out in post-production, of course. Um, but, you know, John, I think this is probably a, a, a show. What do you think? Absolutely. I feel it was a good show. Yeah, so let's go ahead and let's put on some music here because that's what we like to do. Let's get that. Oh, there it is. Ah, you know? God damn it, folks. We're about to roll in on um, our work week. And, uh, you know, I hope that we've t we've helped you here this evening. I hope we've brought you a little bit of fun on your Sunday night. Uh, bring you a little enjoyment here. Talk about some models. Stuff that's not all that important. There's, a, you know, there's a lot of a lot of critical things going on. There's a lot of a lot of hate out there in the world these days, and we're trying to bring you a little spotlight of positivity here on your Sunday night. So focus on us. Don't worry so much about the other stuff. Do the best you can. Have a great week next week. On behalf of the Painting with Menoth John show, I am Menoth John, and that is the mighty right hand of the podcast, Mr. John Spencer. And we will be here next Sunday to bring you just as much positivity and bring you just as much fun here on the Painting with Menoth John show. Good night, everybody.